Alrighty guys, let's talk episode 3 of Skeleton Crew. This is going to be a full spoiler discussion for the third episode of Skeleton Crew. I am, of course, as always, stalling a little bit. In case you have not seen the episode, make sure to just save this video, and this segment, this podcast for later, and you can always come back and listen to my full spoiler thoughts on Skeleton Crew. I also post posted, I try to every single week for these TV shows as much as I can, at the very least if I'm able to post them right after the episode, posted a non-spoiler immediate reaction to this episode as well. And so if you were interested in just hearing non-spoiler thoughts, you can go check it out on the YouTube channel as well. But guys, this is going to be a full spoiler discussion and let's get into episode three for context, as I always like to give. Just just sort of my general thoughts about the show so far. I have loved the first two episodes. I really thought they were fantastic and they were they were different, right? And by different, I don't I mean, sure they were different visually and, and tonally as well. But in terms of just the way that these two episodes made me feel as a Star Wars fan, they were different because I have not felt that kind of pure, unadulterated joy that I have, you know, in 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 this series, in this um in these first two episodes it was just so wonderful to be you know feel connected to these characters to really fall in love with them and to say these are characters that i feel such joy watching these kids are awesome they're great they're great i can't how great did they cast these kids they're awesome right still getting to know them a little bit better but they're they're fantastic and jude law as well popped up a little bit at the end of episode two and now we get into episode three and so my fear was always can you keep up the momentum because other shows other Star Wars shows, have started out strong and then really faltered towards the end. And so the question is always, can you keep up the momentum? And the answer, the answer is yes. I loved this episode as well. And we're going to go through some of my notes and some of my thoughts here as we go along. So first of all, we start out here with the parents, right? And the parents are all worried about their children, naturally. And they're all talking, you know, they want to talk to the supervisor. And it's, again, you know, part of the the great thing about this episode is that it continues to build the mystery of the show as a whole, and a lot of the mystery about the show is centered around at Aden, which seems like it's a vestige of the old republic. Very interesting. I wonder how that you know that kind of lore implication, canon implication, is well, how that's going to play out in the rest of the show. And they want to talk to this supervisor now. Correct me if I'm wrong. We haven't met any supervisor as of yet, so I'm very curious to see who this character ends up being. Is it someone important? Is it you know someone not important? We will see about that. But that's something else to keep an eye out for sure. And then um, we cut to the title and we, we get back to our main crew with Jude Law and the kids. And, you know, it's a good point that Jude Law makes is the kids ask him, why didn't you escape before if you're a Jedi? And he says, well, what's the point of escaping if you don't have a ship? Fair point. And we get to know his name, allegedly, allegedly, because he reveals his name to be Jod, jo- Jode? Is it Jod? I'm going to say Jod. Jod Na Norwood? Is that his name? I, I wrote it down, and I, now all of a sudden I'm looking at it again, and I, I don't think that's right, but I think Jod. Jod is right. We're going to call him Jod. But it's interesting because, you know, what happened to Captain Silvo, right? So there is another name, right? Those are those are two different names that he has gone by, and we'll get a third later on as well. And so that's, again, just keeping in mind with this character that, you know, there's there's something to him, right? There's something to him. He allegedly knows how to use the Force. We'll see about that. Um, but yeah, I think that this is, it's an interesting character to follow because we're not really sure what his whole deal is as well. I do, I love the fact that he's a scoundrel, you know, Jedi or or pirate or or force user or whatever. He plays that character so well. Also just the fact that, uh, this is kind of unrelated, but I, I, I heard this in between episodes one and two and then this week's episode three, SM33, Smee. That's a, that's a Peter Pan reference for those of you who, who don't know, and, and you can go look it up. But it's it's fun. I, I just love that the show is having so much fun, even in those little details as well. But SM33 is also a really, you know, it's a good droid name. So I think that that is awesome. I think it's, it's just so, like, those kinds of things in a show that you don't like and in a show that's cringy or whatever, that's another thing where you're like, oh, come on. Really? That's on the nose. But in a show like this, it's just, it's cute, it's endearing, and I love it. And it's, it's you know, Jude Law is, is playing the perfect pirate. Nick Frost is playing the perfect pirate droid as well and so then they convince him speaking of sm33 to go back and rescue sm33 and he gets caught of course and there's you know he's having a little bit of a skirmish there as he's escaping the planet and all the while the kids are having an argument on the ship and it's a good point about whether or not he's a jedi just because he says he's a jedi and whether or not he really used the force and i think that this is going to be an interesting plot point because obviously canonically as well in the lore you know jedi are supposed to be pretty much extinct i mean luke skywalker is out there running around and ahsoka is running around 
somewhere, and I'm sure there are a couple other loose Jedis that I'm forgetting about, but it's interesting, right? This guy seems like he used the Force, but that's already being brought into question, and they're, they're talking about different theories, maybe he used a string, and j- just as a joke, but just to reiterate the point that, you know, who knows, right? Who knows what his actual deal is, and I think that that is super interesting. And then we have this big, fun, you know, sequence where they're escaping the planet, they're escaping the fuel lines, and it's, you know, you know what it is, too? I said this in my immediate reaction. It's the music, too. The music is so Star Wars. It's so, it feels like it, it it harkens back to the John Williams kind of music. I don't know who did the music. Is it Kevin Kiner? Maybe it's Kevin Kiner who did a lot of Clone Wars. It feels so Star Warsy that I just, I can't help it but be transported back into that, that mindset. You know, like this is Star Wars and I, I love it. And something about also just the production design and the care that this show seems to have in, in being a part of Star Wars while also being its own thing is just so so amazing and i love that so anyways they escape and you know it's interesting right this guy jod or or whatever his name is can use the force allegedly but isn't probably isn't a jedi and so we'll we'll, i'm i'm very curious to see what his backstory backstory entails and where we go from here with this character but i you know i can't say it enough i love the show the kids are great jude law is a great addition the set design is awesome music is fun the mystery is interesting the you know the need to get home but it's not just you know about the kids getting home it's the fact that they're home also has some kind of galactic significance and some treasure maybe at, on, on, on at Aden, and it's awesome. So then Jude Law says, okay, well, we, we need to go meet my friend who says we can they can get you home. And to me, I don't know. To me, there's, there's a marked difference here between, because you know, for those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, I hate filler episodes, and I, I complained to death when The Mandalorian, you know, was coming out, season two especially, where you have episodes like the frog episode or just random other episodes where you're like, oh, come on. Like, these are completely filler episodes because Mando goes to a planet and needs to get a thing and then gets stuck on that planet and then leaves the planet at the end of the episode. And I can get the argument that this episode is kind of like that as well. I think it's different though, because for a lot of the Mandalorian episodes, they felt like side quests. This feels like part of the main quest. It's about getting home, right? I I keep thinking about that one Mandalorian episode where he's like, I need a new ship. And that Amy Sedaris is like, hey, well, that's fine. Go get these parts. And he goes on this whole side quest mission to get these parts for his ship. And then he gets the ship at the end. I'm like, that's that's lame, honestly, to me. I'm sorry if you, you know, love the Mandalorian. I'm not trying to disparage anyone who loves the Mandalorian, obviously. It's just my own opinion. But, you know, I, I just think that 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 feels like it, it, it was a bit of a waste of, of the overarching story and the time that you were allotted for the show. But this feels like, well, yes, you know, of course you're pit stopping onto a moon and you're meeting a weird owl creature, which we'll talk about in just a second. It feels like it's still part of the main story. And I love the shots where they're silhouetted against the planets. It's so, so pretty. Again, just the care and precision that this show has for Star Wars. I love it. It's awesome. So anyways, we meet this owl creature who calls him Crimson Jack. So again, something to note here. Crimson Jack is the third name that Jude Law's character goes by, and we'll see what his actual name is or what his backstory is, I, I suppose, as this show goes along. And then we meet this flying owl creature. And I said in my immediate reaction, there was one thing in this episode that I went, uh-oh, that that's not that good. And it's this owl character. I think whoever's voicing it kind of hams it up a little bit too much, and the CGI is... Everything else in this series looks really great. You know, even the aliens, like... Uh, Neil looks great, and, and SM33 looks great, and all the planets look great in the space. And this owl thing just stuck out like a sore thumb, and it's not good. I, I mean, it's the first thing in this entire show where I went, uh-oh, that, that wasn't good. That being said, it is such a minor point in this entire series because it doesn't matter if the owl looks terrible. I mean, that, you know, if it's just that one thing, it doesn't have any bearing on my enjoyment of the story at all. And even the overacting, whatever, because honestly, it's just such a small part of it that I'm like, whatever, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. I, I think Amy Sedaris's character in The Mandalorian annoys me more than this owl did. So it's totally fine. It's just totally fine. So anyways, we're getting some backstory here. Whether or not all of this stuff that the owl character is saying is true or whether or not she was stalling, I don't know. But I'm assuming that what she's saying is true. And she, you know, reveals that Ad Adin might have been a vestige of the Old Republic, one of the planets that, that survived that. And I think that that is interesting. Uh, another interesting fact, they were hinting at this towards uh, in, the, in the earlier episodes, but the fact that they don't even know Alderaan was destroyed, also very interesting. I wonder, I really am very curious now. I'm, I'm growing very curious and invested in this mystery about what is the deal with these uh, with this planet and, and what's going on here and how they, how they were not able to we're so isolated and sheltered from the rest of the galaxy. I think that that is super interesting, super, super interesting. Again, I don't, you know, as this character is talking, I don't, I don't, lo- I don't love 
the owl creature, but I was on board at least with the with the search, you know, searching for the planet and, and trying to understand where it came from. I think that part was totally fine. And then um, they they make their escape as the X-Wings come, which X-Wings, X-Wings are here. And it's interesting too, because Judd says, you know, trust your gut to KB and the owl says, trust your head. So all of a sudden you have conflicting information now and who knows, who knows, you know, where we go from here because obviously Judd is kind of an untrustworthy character, you know, untrustworthy character. Um, and he, you know, they have this big confrontation in front of the ship and he admits he's not a Jedi. So again, we get that confirmation at the end of the episode, but I, I do think he is using the force. I'm not quite sure how he, he would be able to pull it off otherwise. I do think he's using the force, where he learned it from, who he learned it from, how he learned it from. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see where that comes from. Also, as they're escaping, a really fun space battle, by the way. Really fascinating to see that the kids are calling these X-Wings goons because they don't know any better, right? These, you know, For us, it's been coded into our brains that X-Wings are good guys, right? X-Wings are the good ships. But for these kids, they don't know any better. And so it, it totally makes sense. And I, I just, I love... I love this sense of adventure that we're getting from from this space battle. I love how the kids are so eager to get into the gunner's chairs. And it's, guys, I I don't know. For me, right, I, as somebody who grew up loving Star Wars, this, this just screams Star Wars. And I was grinning from ear to ear. This episode was awesome. The ending of this episode was awesome as they head into hyperspace. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it that, you know, this is the show. Who would have thought, right? And again, I acknowledge, you know, as with any show, that the, the entire thing could just fall apart and go downhill from here completely downhill totally acknowledge that but i if this show maintains this kind of momentum this is going to be the show that really endears me to, to any star wars television show and i i can't believe that it's skeleton crew skeleton crew of all things it just goes to show you it's not it's not really the concept you know it's not necessarily you make a show about Obi-Wan or you tell me that you're going to make a show Ahsoka that's based on the clone wars and rebels which i conceptually way more interesting to me, but it's the execution, right? It's who's making the show, John Watts, who, John Watts is amazing. I don't know how he does it. John Watts is amazing. And it's the execution and it's the care and the love that you put into these kinds of shows. And I think that that's great. So those are my thoughts on episode three of Skeleton Crew. Again, just cannot wait for episode four. Cannot wait every single week for a new episode of this show. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about episode three of Skeleton Crew and whether or not you're excited for the next one. Let me know in the comments down below.